Hi, it's Barbara. Welcome back to Wikidesign. Today I'm going to show you how to change images on Hover using the Elementor page builder. What I mean by this is that when you hover over an image, it changes to something else. There are three different ways that I like to do this. There's the first way, which is changing out the background images. The second way we'll go over is using an image widget, but then using a background image on hover. And the third and final way is by using the flip box widget. So today I'm going to show you how to achieve the same effect using three different methods. Let's scroll up to the top and go over how to do it using background images. What I'm going to do is just create another two column widget and then I'm going to walk you through how I did this. The first thing that I need to do is add a spacer to this right column. So I'm going to click on that and then drag over a spacer. And the reason that you need to add a spacer is because when you do background images, if there's nothing in the column, nothing is going to show up. So we need to have something in there in order for the background images to actually show. So a spacer is a good solution for that. I'm just going to adjust the height of this so that it fits the image. We have enough space for the image to actually show. So I did that and now I'm going to click on this column and I'm going to go to style. Under background, you'll see that we have a normal and then a hover tab. So what we can do is choose the classic background type and then upload our normal image, which is the woman standing with the front of the skirt showing. I'll hit insert media there. And you can see that we do need to make a couple of adjustments in order for the entire image to fit like it does on this column. So we'll need to adjust our repeat first. So we don't want it to repeat. If we had it set to repeat, then it would just repeat over and over again. So we'll set that and then we'll set the size to contain. So that means it's contained within the column. Now, depending on what your image looks like and the layout that you have for your page, these settings might vary. But for this example, I want the whole image to show. I'm also going to change the position from default to center left so that it's always locked to the left hand side. Okay, so now that's looking pretty good. We have to do the hover now. So again, I'll go to background type and for the image, I'm going to pick the back of the skirt. So I'll hit insert media. And again, we have to make those adjustments in order for it to fit in the container the right way. So we're going to put no repeat and then we're going to do contain and then do center left for the positioning. So now if we hover over this, you can see that it changes which is a pretty cool effect. It looks like this column below it. Now that's really cool and it works really well, but what happens if you want the image to link to another page? Well, you can't do that when you're using image backgrounds. So we have to come up with a different solution in order to link the image to another page. And that is where using an image with a background hover can be very effective. In this situation, you can see that I do have the ability to link. The cursor changes and that indicates that it is linking to another page. So how do we achieve this? Let's again add another section that's two columns and I'll show you how to do it this way. The first thing that we're going to want to do is drag over an image widget to this column. I'm going to change the image size to full and then I'm going to select the front of the skirt. So now we have our image in here and we can link it to whatever page that we want to link it to. I'm just going to put in 
this page. So you can see now the cursor change, it is linking to another page, but we need to add the hover now. So what we're going to have to do is go to the column and then we're going to have to go to style again. And similarly to how we did it in the previous section, we're going to go to hover and then we're going to upload the back of the skirt as the hover. So if we hover over this, you can see that something's happening here. So what we have to do now is go and change some settings on the hover of this image widget. So if we click on the image widget and then go to style, we have to change some settings in here. The first setting that we'll want to change is under the opacity on the hover setting. So if we go to hover and make the opacity zero, look what happens. You can see now it changed to the back of the image. So what we're basically doing is saying when we hover over the image widget, it just goes to 0% opacity so we don't see it. Instead, what we see is the hover of this entire column. So it's kind of a little bit of a trick way to get this to work, but it's very useful if you need to link your image to another page. Now we can add some transition durations in here if we want to make that go a little bit smoother. And now it kind of fades in a little bit. We might want to also for this widget, just for the entire section, change the columns gap so it has no gap. So that way it doesn't have a little bit of that overlap that we're seeing. So now it looks a little more smooth. So that is a great way to add a link to an image and then still have it change on hover. The third way, if we scroll down to the bottom, is by using the flip box. Now the flip box is only available if you are using Elementor Pro. This isn't a widget that is available if you have the free version of Elementor. But I wanted to mention this widget because there are a lot of other things that you can do with this widget. So if you want to have text overlays or button overlays, this is something that you can do with the flip box where you can't do that with the other methods that I showed. So it is worth it if you want to customize your sections a little bit further. I love Elementor Pro. I personally use it. I use it for all of my designs for my clients. It's a great program, totally worth the money because you get a lot of these extra widgets and a lot more features. So let me show you how to use this Elementor Pro widget to achieve this same effect. So again, I'm going to create another two column section. And this time I'm going to put in a flip box on the right column. So I'm just going to search flip box here and then I'm going to drag that over. So you can see by default, this looks a lot different than what I have down here. There are a lot of cool features about the flip box. You can add icons, headings, some text, you can link it up. There's a lot of cool things that you can do. So if you have Elementor Pro, you might wanna experiment with using this in other ways. But for this example, I'm going to just edit the background image area in order to achieve this effect. So I'm going to hit edit on this and in the front panel, I'm going to remove the icon, remove this heading and remove this text. So what we're left with is just a green box. If I go to background type, again, I can upload an image here. So I'm going to upload the image that I've been using for the front. Now we do have to, again, make some adjustments in order for it to fit correctly. So I'm going to adjust the repeat to no repeat. I'm going to adjust the size to contain. And now you can see that we have the image in there, but there's still that green background. With the flip box, we do have to specify that the color 
is transparent. So I'm just gonna drag this slider on the color down to zero. So now we just have the image and no background color behind it. That's something that you do have to do when you work with the flip box. I'm also going to adjust the settings so it makes it look a little bit bigger, but I'm going to do that after I change the back settings, which is the next uh, accordion that we have to deal with. So this pulls up the settings for the back of the flip. So we have to get rid of the heading, we have to get rid of the text. Now we also have to get rid of this button that says click here. We still can have a link here. So if you wanted to link this to another page, you can just put your link in here. Uh, but you don't have to have a button. You can add it if you want to. It's a cool feature of the flip box, but it's totally optional. And again, we're going to go to background. We're going to click on background type. I'm going to just go ahead and get rid of the color. And then I'm going to upload the back image. We'll have to again adjust our settings so that it fits within the container. And now if we go back to the front, you can see that it changes and it has some cool transition effects that we can change down under settings if we want to. Under settings, we can change a few things like the height. I'm going to change this to 600 pixels because I do believe that is the height of the image. We do have some options to set a border radius and stuff like that as well. And then the flip effect. So right now it flips up, but we do have the option to do a fade like we did on the other uh, section. So we can just have it fade in nicely. So that's how you use the flip box, which is a really cool feature in Elementor Pro. All of these features are really cool. I think having the ability to change out the images without having to know CSS code is a really cool feature of Elementor. You just have to know kind of how to style everything and where to go in order to make this happen. But something that can easily be done with both the free version of Elementor and Elementor Pro. So this is something that you don't necessarily need to purchase Elementor Pro to do. Like I showed you in these other versions, you can achieve the same effect just using the free version. So I hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel because we upload new Elementor tutorials pretty frequently here. So subscribe if you're interested in learning more and we'll see you next time.